Almost all of us know this. Because right after he passed away, that same website that was collecting, I believe, $20,000 shot up and collected about a quarter million dollars. But something you guys might not know, Shafi Khan was invited to speak, and Shafi Khan is a spokesperson and he's very high up in UMR, United Muslim Relief. He was invited to speak on CNN about this. And he was saying that Dia was somebody who went after this even though this is our toughest cell, the dental relief. This is the toughest program. But Dia wanted to start this initiative after his brother did. And he was so enthusiastic about it that he was, he was raising the money. He was making videos. He was doing what he could to make sure that he would go with 10 other professors and students from the university and provide this relief for the Syrian refugees. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that he would not get the chance to do this. The next person is Yusur Abu Salha. She was married to Dia Shadi Barakat. And she also was a student at that same university and planned to go with him to Turkey. And brothers and sisters, her father described her as somebody who would always be smiling and as somebody who was of the best character. The third and last victim of this horrible tragedy was Razan Abu Salha. She was the sister of Yusuf and the sister-in-law of Dia. She was just a sophomore at that same university. And she made the Dean's List for fall of 2014. And Allah willed that she would not be here to make the Dean's List for spring of 2015. And she was also of the ones that wanted to help out in Turkey with her brother and sister. Brothers and sisters, there's no doubt that this was a crime of hate. And whoever thinks otherwise is not only gullible, but has an agenda. There is no way that anything else besides hate could have done this. But brothers and sisters, if you look through Diaz's Twitter, you will know he was a person of peace. You will know he was a person who spread this peace. And this is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though this was because of hate, we Muslims are taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to never counter this hate with more hate and violence. His own life testifies to this fact. When the people of Ta'if threw stones at the Prophet ﷺ, when he went to them for help, the angels came down and told him, Ya Rasulullah, if you want, we can destroy them all. But the Prophet ﷺ was the most merciful from among us and he said, no. It could be that Muslims arise from their children. 
It could be that Muslims arise from their children. And this is after they had pelted him with stones. And the Sahaba that were with him said that when he finally rested, we tried to take off his sandals from his foot. And there was so much blood there that it was, it was glued onto his foot. That's how much blood and that's how much they hurt the Prophet But Allah had wisdom in why He made the Prophet go through that. And Wallahi brothers and sisters, there's wisdom in why Allah made this happen too. Number one, it's a reminder to us that this life is temporary. It's a reminder to us that no matter what dreams and hopes and plans you have, you are not even guaranteed the next hour. And so what are you doing to prepare for this? Another wisdom is that Allah ended their hardship. Allah ended the hardships of our three winners and elevated them in status. And they are more alive now than they were before their death. How much money has gone to provide Sadaqah Jariyah for them? How many people are standing up for them? How many people are testifying for them and their good actions? All these people will be witness to them on Yom al Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment. Brothers and sisters, I ask you, who is going to be witness for us? Is this the treatment that we are going to get when we die? And this is a blessing of Allah, that He is raising somebody even after their death. And I pray that we are all given this blessing. When the story first came out, I read about it at 5 a.m. It was just a posting on Facebook, so I went to I went to check the news nowhere. But everybody on Twitter and Facebook was posting this nonstop. The next day, still no attention. Until we raise our voice. Over a million people tweeting about this. Until finally they said, okay. And it went from a story that wasn't even published to one, of, one that is now a headline. One that is now on the front pages of these same media websites. And this is another wisdom of Allah. That even though this was something terrible, and this was a tragedy to the Muslim Ummah, that He united us on this. And unless we spoke up, this would have never made any, any news channel. It would not even be a headline. It would just be a little blur on the bottom of the page. And there is no doubt that this is a fitna for us. This is a trial for us. And this is a trial and Allah will send even more trials for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states this in the Quran in Surah Al-Ankabut when He says, Alif Lam Meem Ahasib al-Nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun Allah is saying, did you think that you would just say, I believe, and that we would not test you? Did you think that you would have this foundation, and this foundation wouldn't be tested, to see how strong it is? And Allah continues in the next ayah, 
Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah says, we have certainly tried those who came before you, and Allah will make evident those who are truthful and those who are the liars. And so this fitna, this trial, is a means to cleanse the ummah. You will see a lot of people with two faces pop up. People that were speaking for one thing, but now they suddenly change their agenda and don't speak for this. This is the wisdom behind these fitnas. And the remedy is that the Prophet ﷺ tells us, فَاسْتَقِمْ to stay on the straight path when these fitnas come. And this is why we recite in every salah, إِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Why is it that we're just saying this again and again without knowing the meaning, without believing the meaning? Because we are asking Allah that in these tough times to keep us on the straight path. So brothers and sisters, Prophet ﷺ narrates in another hadith that explains everything that is happening now that happened to these three students and everything that happens in the Middle East and in Africa and in South Asia and in China. All this blood that is being spilled, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that there will come a time when the knowledge will be lifted from the people and there will be much bloodshed. Look how the Prophet ﷺ is saying that with the lifting of knowledge, there will be increased bloodshed. And there is no doubt that this was an act of ignorance. But how many of us are learning this deen to prove this otherwise? To all these people who have this ignorance of Islam who believe what they hear on the media, and who believe their friends, but have never actually seen Muslims act the way that Muslims should. The lifting up of knowledge. This is Islamic knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about. How many of us are pursuing Islamic knowledge. How many of us actually have firm belief in this hadith that this is a solution to our problem? I pray that Allah gives us the tawfiq to set aside time for Islamic knowledge and to make time for Islamic knowledge. And I pray that Allah's mercy be upon the three students killed, our three winners, and I pray that Allah's mercy encompasses us. sisters, we did not know these three people. We never met them. We never hung out with them. We never shared a meal with them. We never talked with them. But Wallahi, we love them. And we love the work that they did for Islam. They were embodying the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is exactly the takeaway that we need from this whole situation. Why is it that we are only reactive to such things? Emotions start flaring. We hear about these incidents and immediately everybody wants to do something. They were on the forefront of the Tao. Where are we? 
Where are we? They were doing what they needed to, and they were spreading the peace. But brothers and sisters, I ask you, when it comes time to spread the mannerisms of Islam, and the mannerisms that the Prophet ﷺ taught us, where are we? Or are we only pumped whenever there's a protest or a vigil? Where are we in performing the obligations of Islam? And we're going to talk about our community for a second. Everyone's worried about the global issues. But what are you doing within your community to change this? How come so many people stand up when we really don't need so many people to stand up, but nobody stands up when the need arises? How come there are so many people at Rutgers that know absolutely nothing about Islam? And that know absolutely nothing about the mannerisms of the Prophet ﷺ. Are they to blame? <coughs> it's easy to point the finger, brothers and sisters, but what's hard is to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what am I doing to change this? Within myself, within my family, within my community, within my town. What am I doing? What are we doing within school, within our classrooms, within our internships, within our jobs to make sure that the people next to us know that we are of the best manners and that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the one that taught us this? Do we make it known? The Prophet وسلم, said in, a, in an authentic hadith that he has not been sent except to perfect Good character. How many of us try to perfect our character? <coughs> there are so many people that hate Islam because they know absolutely nothing else except how to hate it. No one's going to come and teach them how to love Islam. This is our job. This is where our mouth needs to open and tell them why they need to love Muslims and love Islam. But where are we when the need arises for that? <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, you are in a position right now where you have the time to take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Because honestly, after you graduate, you won't have this time. You're at a point where you have all the energy in the world that when the call comes for Muslims to act in goodness and to spread the khair among the community, this is when we need to step up. But where are we? I know we have this thought process that, oh, this organization is doing that work, or that organization is doing that work. When we go in front of Allah, when we pass away and on the day of judgment we're resurrected in front of Allah, Wallahi, He will not ask you what your organization did. He will ask you what you did. And what is going to be your response? What is going to be our response? We have absolutely no excuse. We have absolutely no excuse that we can use in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is unfortunate that there was a time when Islam was spread through just the mannerisms of the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ was talking to the Sahaba and he told them, there will soon come a time when the nations of this world will vie and compete to attack you. And the Sahaba were startled. Because this is when the Ummah was in its prime and, and the only thing they could think of was that Ya Rasulullah, would, would we be few in number? And the Prophet wasallam said, no. You, you will be vast in your quantity, but you will be like the foam of the ocean. Worthless. And look at us now. 
1.5 billion Muslims in the world. And our voice is barely heard. Nobody cares. He's hurting over there. Well, he's not, he's not from my family, or she's not from my family, or my land, or my people, or my color. The Ummah is like a body, brothers and sisters. The Ummah is like a body. It, regardless of where they're from, it hurts us. And when it hurts us, we speak up. It is unfortunate, extremely unfortunate, that nowadays the voice of the media has become louder than the actions of the Muslims. We are in a very bad place right now, brothers and sisters. And only we can change the status quo. You and I need to start from here and spread the goodness of Islam and show everybody that what they're hearing is not what we are. And when they see for themselves, they'll be the ones to talk against this. They will be the ones that will talk against this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that He does not change the state of the people until they change themselves. And we all have an obligation to change ourselves. And going forward, brothers and sisters, purify your intentions for the sake of Allah. And make sure that whatever you're doing from now on, is with utmost sincerity. And I pray that Allah protect us and give us a righteous ending like He gave to, to our three winners that were murdered. We pray that Allah grant us patience through this difficult time and allow us to become united and stronger as an ummah from this fitna. May Allah allow us to learn from the fitna and to become of the truthful and the pious. May He grant us Jannah and the highest levels of it. May He accept the three winners as our shuhada and grant them windows to paradise in their graves. May He forgive all of their sins and forgive all of our sins. And may He give patience to the families and allow them to become stronger in Iman after this ordeal. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Ibadallah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واتقوه يجعل لكم من أمركم مخرجا وأقيم الصلاة